This video shows you how to create a GPX file from scratch using a website called gpx.studio, as well as edit GPX files you can download from Roadrunner Motorcycle Touring and Travel. Roadrunner print subscribers have access to GPS files back to the Gen Feb 2020 issue, while Roadrunner web subscribers have access to over 700 GPS files throughout the US. First, I'll give you a little information about the GPX file format and how motorcycle riders use navigation planning tools. Then, let's look at a checklist of tasks a planning tool must include to be worthwhile. And then finally, I'll show you how to create a GPX file from scratch before uploading and editing a route from Roadrunner. These days, most motorcycle touring riders use GPS routes and tracks. Roadrunner, for example, provides GPS files for all travel and tour articles. Garmin has cemented that GPS exchange format, better known as GPX, as the file format for overland navigation. Virtually the entire motorcycle navigation segment, from devices to apps, supports GPX. Garmin's ecosystem includes its numerous navigation devices and the Basecamp software, which is a free download for computers running on Windows or Mac OS. After the installation, Basecamp requires either plugging in a Garmin device that has pre-installed maps or purchasing Garmin maps online. This closed garden approach could work if you're fully invested in Garmin products, but it does lock you to just one vendor. Today, many riders choose to navigate with mobile applications such as Drive Mode Dashboard 2, Locus Map, Gaia GPS, River, Riser, there are so many. Others still have TomTom navigation devices too. On top of the costs, Basecamp has a complex and archaic user interface with a steep learning curve. The experience with Basecamp can feel limited, inefficient and frustrating. How can we view and edit GPX tracks without relying on Basecamp? There are several tools available and this video will focus on a website called gpx.studio. Before diving in, it's worth reviewing what typical tasks we want to perform when planning a track. Some of the common functionalities are opening and importing tracks from GPX files and viewing them on a digital map. Switching views between road maps and topographic maps, which are important for adventure trips that contain off-road sections. Drawing tracks on a map using a mouse, stylus pen or finger. Adding, editing, moving or removing waypoints. Reversing track direction. Search capabilities to look up street addresses and points of interest. Splitting a track into two parts for removing unnecessary sections. Merging tracks together to turn several recorded tracks into one unified track or a multi-track file. Exporting a track to GPX file for use in a navigation device or app. Let's take a closer look at gpx.studio, which is a free online open source tool for viewing and editing GPX tracks. There are no ads or limitations, no account registration is required, and data is stored locally instead of a cloud server, which helps protect your privacy. The user interface is easy and quick to learn and use, with a flat menu and minimalist design for simplicity. The underlying maps utilize the community-driven OpenStreetMap project and provide different base maps, such as street, topo, and satellite maps, as well as layers for POIs and trails that show on top of the maps. Multiple tracks can be viewed simultaneously with a useful distance and elevation chart on the bottom. Dropping a POI, such as a restaurant we want to stop at for lunch, onto the map is straightforward. You can rename POIs and assign them different icons that would later show up in the navigation device. Editing points and routing paths can be done in two modes. In the routing mode, Waypoints will follow roads and stick to them, just like how Google Maps works. The off-road mode enables you to draw tracks anywhere on the map, regardless of the underlying roads. This is a useful feature for adventure touring, which mixes road and off-road segments. One of my favorite features is the cropping tool that allows you to remove waypoints using a bounding rectangle. When cleaning up recorded tracks, the cropping tool saves a lot of time. Another nice touch is the Street View Imagery feature that uses Google Street View or Mapillary to allow the user to better design tracks by viewing the actual world at any given point. 
There is another tool, the Waypoint Reducer, that retains only a subset of the original track's waypoints, which helps shorten lengthy tracks. One possible downside to GPX.studio is that it requires a steady network connection. This may not be a real issue because we generally plan tracks at home or in a hotel with a reliable Wi-Fi connection. Okay, let's build a route from scratch. First, go to gpx.studio. When you first go to the website, you'll have a blank map. First thing you need to do is click on new gpx at the top. Once you click on that, a little box opens up on the left hand side, letting you know you are in active routing mode. So for example, here I'm in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and I'll just route us around it on a pretty classic loop. Let's say we want to go out of Bryson City and do a counterclockwise loop. So most importantly is when you select your waypoints that you zoom in and actually hit the road and aren't in a field. Okay. So first we'll hit the first one right in the middle of town and then we know we want to get up here on 441. Once you click on the next road, then it'll snap to the road as you can see here. If at some point you see straight lines, that means one of your waypoints was not on the road and it was somewhere in the field. So I'll just go ahead and route this all the way around. Go to Townsend. Go through Happy Valley. Highway 129, DL Scap, all the good stuff. Oh, see, went too far, but what I can do is I can drag and drop this onto 28 and then come back on 28. And here you can see I was sloppy and didn't quite hit the road, but I can just drag and drop this here. And then I can finish back in Bryson City. As soon as you hit the check mark, then you're out of the editing and then you have the overview on the bottom on the bottom you have the elevation profile so you can if you drag your mouse over it or use the slider at the bottom you can actually see the green dot on the map move and you can see not only the elevation but also the distance along the way a really useful tool so here the total route is about 141 miles you can also click over here and show the direction markers and little arrows pop up. And you can also show distance markers, which a little confusing. They do look like road signs, but those are the mileage markers along the way. Just something useful you can use as well. If you want to change the route, you have to be in the editing mode here. So you can either click on the route or you can click on the check mark here and then you can move the waypoints again. So for example, if you want to go down Highway 129 a little bit and check out the lake, then you can just drag and drop. Drag and drop those points to where you want to go. And then when you're done, you just click on, back on the edit pencil. Here you can also uncheck following roads, which is the useful tool if you want to go off-road. So let's say you want to be really adventurous and start riding into the road. So what we have to do here is first remove this point and let's say you're here in Bryson City and you want to go up here and then you can actually make a bunch of little points if you want to ride off-road. So something very, very useful on the tool. If you want to clear a selection, then you can use this rectangle tool and you can highlight all the points you want to delete and then proceed and then it deletes them. It's a very useful tool. Let's say if we record a track and import it here and you made a bunch of back and forths so because you got lost or something, you can use that tool to clean up your route very quickly. Other useful features are the reversing feature. If you click on the reverse, instead of going counterclockwise, we'll go clockwise. You can duplicate the route, you can add a waypoint. So you click on the waypoint marker and you can click here. Maybe we'll go get some lunch right here and you can give it a name, lunch. 
And these markers actually show up in your device too, whether you use a Garmin to navigate or your phone, these markers will show up with the name you give it. You can also reduce the number of track points. You can make a whole lot more if you want to be really specific. Again, very useful if you are riding off-road. And you can also reduce the numbers if your device, for example, can't handle a lot of points. You can change the color of the route that is on the screen. For example, I can just make it blue, for example. And you can also go into it and you can add multiple routes if you want to make it longer. Or this is where you can merge tracks and delete certain legs of it. Again, as a quick recap, if you want to start a new route, just hit the new GPX up here. Start zooming in of where you want to start. You have to be on a road. And then just, it's as simple as click and point to make a loop. And when you're done, hit that little check mark so you're out of the editing feature. You can see your start and you can see your finish. And when you're ready to export, simply click export at the top. Here you have a few different export settings. Um, leaf surface checked, usually if you only have one route, this doesn't really matter, but you also have the option to merge all traces. If you have multiple routes open, you can merge them all together. Um, personally, I always like to keep them separate, so it might be a good idea to just to work on one day at a time. Now let me show you how you can get routes from Roadrunner's website. If you click on the Tours tab, you have them all sorted by the most recent ones at the top. You also have your tour filters that you can use, or you can use the lookup function here in the top right hand corner. For example, I can type in City Escapes. All city escapes are free on the entire website and you do not have to have a web subscription. If you do have a web subscription, you have access to all 700 tours. Once you click on city escape, you have the most recent ones at the top and then you click on one, scroll down until you see the map, download GPX track file. Then head over to GPX Studio, you can hit load GPX from your desktop. And voila, it's in there. This is just like the tour you see in Roadrunner Magazine or on roadrunner.travel. You can use it as is, it's perfectly fine, but let's say you would like to include some notes. For example, if you'd like to eat lunch in let's say Manchester center right here okay so you would just click on the PUI marker over here and then wherever you want to eat lunch you can type in this is where my lunch spot is going to be very easy right but a little more complicated let's say that this road right here would look pretty good and you would like to include it if you're already in the area so how can you edit the tour that you got from Roadrunner Quite simple, you just click on the route itself until you see this editing option open. Then you can see all of the waypoints. And then it's as simple as taking the route and dragging it over. And then you've made this tour your own. And then you can check out of it again, and then it's here. And then the same thing you can do for your starting and ending point. For example, if you want to change the starting and ending point based on a hotel that you're staying at. So let's say the hotel is down here somewhere. You just click on the route, hit the pencil, and then you can drag to where the hotel is, for example. And right now I'm really only dragging it to somewhere else to show you that you can drag and drop wherever you want. And then when you're done, hit the check mark, and then you have a new starting and ending point. It's really as simple as that. And then when you're ready, you just hit the export button at the top, hit download, and then you can upload this track to your Garmin or to your phone. GPX.studio has a growing community with developers contributing their free time to enhance the software. 
The website is free to use, but does accept donations because running the backend service has operational costs for the project owners. For most track design purposes, GPX.studio can do anything that Basecamp can do, but for free and without relying on Garmin maps or devices. No installation is needed and there are no catches. It's a great tool that gets the job done following the KISS, keep it simple, design paradigm and provides a slick web interface that is quick to learn and easy to use. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please check the links in the description to sign up for a free newsletter.